Hello everyone and welcome back to Sony Condo Everywhere. I'm going to be speaking now about ways to create beautiful images during magic hour, that time of day right around twilight when you get the most beautiful images of the day. I'm going to show you a couple tricks to make the most of that. So stay tuned and then stick around at the end where I'm going to take your questions. Let me show you why the white balance you select is the key to creating really cool magic hour twilight shots. Let's start off with an image right here that was shot with auto white balance selected in camera. Auto white balance does what? Tries to make everything look neutral gray. So if you come up here in the mid-tone grays, you notice they're perfectly neutral. And if you ask me, perfectly boring. So technically they're right, but aesthetically uh, it just isn't that interesting. Now this would actually look a little bit better if instead of auto white balance, we selected daylight. At least that starts to bring in, as you can see, a little bit of the blue, the feel of, of um, twilight that you see. So this is getting better, but it's still not where I really want to be. Now, all this stuff we're shooting in raw, so we can adjust this later in post, but I want to see changes in camera. So in camera, I'm going to select tungsten auto white balance. And by selecting live view setting effect on my Sony camera, I see in real time the look, the, this blue tungsten feel in whether I'm shooting with my EVF or my LCD, as I'm composing the shot, I see what I'm going to get. That's something you don't get on your DSLR. You see it after the shot, but I want to see it in real time. So now I get this feel of what tungsten looks like. Um, as you can see, this is real similar to what you would do in post. You notice Sony settings are 2850 as the Kelvin temperature and plus five magenta. If I was doing this in post selecting tungsten, same color temperature, 2850, but it's just neutralized between, uh, between green and, and magenta. So I actually, I prefer this little bit of, I prefer the way that Sony sh shoots tungsten, which is to give it just a little bit of magenta, maybe a little more to the purple side. And I'm seeing this in real time. Again, we can affect this later. So right now, I, I'll agree, this is a little bit overdone, but as the light drops down, you can see it starts to look better and better. And my goal here is to match the neon with the ambient light on the building. So as the light's getting darker and darker, this blend is getting better and better. And I want to keep shooting until I've gone beyond the point that I think it looks balanced to my eye, because it's always better to, to back up a few frames and know that you've shot beyond it than to go, gee, I stopped too soon. So shoot, shoot till you're, you've shot a little bit too long and you've got this, you've got this and we're going to back off. And I would say it's between the two of these, right? So this has a little bit more shadow detail, but the highlights are blown out. Whereas here, the, the highlights are looking pretty good. Um, and I know I can bring the shadow detail up here. So we're going to select this image and get, just hide everything else. So there we go. Here's the image we're going to work with. And this is how it's shot in camera. But as you guys know, Sony cameras have the best dynamic range, huge amount of dynamic, dynamic range that isn't necessarily um, shown in your default file. But I can come up right in here and just open up the shadow detail till, you know, it's right about there looks right to me. So. So I'm going to write there. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. And now I'm going to come over to the highlights and I'm going to drag those down. And that looks pretty good to me right there. I like the way that looks. The next thing that I'm noticing is like right in here, um, it's the exposure I want, but it's kind of flat. And this is, this is our mid-tones. So rather than putting an overall contrast and adjusting the whole image, I just want to adjust this mid-tone contrast, which Adobe calls clarity. So whether you're in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom, the clarity slider right here, we're just going to bring this up right here so we got a nice little pop in, 
and clarity. That looks pretty good right there, all right? So overall, that looks really nice. This is the exposure that I'm going to work with, but I want to do one more thing. I want to, I want to adjust this independently. So I am going to come up here under Photo and create a virtual copy. Now, I've not duplicated the image. I've just created a copy of it. So I'm going to come right in here now. And now I'm going to change the color balance on this back as though I shot it with daylight white balance in camera. So once again, this is non-destructive. We're, we're dealing with the raw files, so I'm, we're not ruining anything by doing it this way. So we've just created this. So that's I'm going to pull the neon out of these areas right here. And then I'm going to take this little this window that's illuminated and the, the yellow light right there as well. I want to tweak that separately. I think we can make that look a little bit better. So we're going to come down to our hue saturation luminance tab. And so that I see what I'm working with right here, I'm going to grab this right here and I'm just going to adjust this saturation up slightly. I'm not going to go nuts, but just so it really shows up. And then I can grab the dropper tool from the, the luminance and I can play around with that as well. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to get a little bit brighter. I can also play around right here where we can take that anything from really red right there to, I know because I've got that orange, it's probably going to look better if I go just a little bit away from that. So that's a little bit more right there. Okay. Right there, looks good. Okay, put that dropper back so we don't mess with it. And okay, so right there. So here are the two files that we're going to work with. I'm going to select both versions of the image, click export. That's going to bring me up to this dialog box. I want to put it in the same folder as the original in a subfolder called Finals. I'm going to export these as 16-bit PSDs. I always do my working files as PSD and my flattened files as TIFFs. That way I know if I'm looking through a folder, if it says PSD, that's going to be my layered file. And if it says TIFF, it's going to be an 8-bit flattened file for delivery. So exporting at 16 bits, PSD, I'm going to use Profoto RGB as my color space because it's got the closest thing to, it's got the, the widest gamut closest to a RAW file that you can possibly get. And this image has a lot of image. Now, if you prefer Adobe RGB is closer to what your monitor actually represents, um, just do not use sRGB because that's, you're really, really limiting the color gamut if you do sRGB but I'm going to go with Profoto RGB, keep the widest range that I can, and then I'm going to select as soon as it exports, I want these to open up in Photoshop 2020. So I'm going to hit export, and what it's going to do is going to export both versions of this file. So I have basically two, two versions of the same image that I can work with. So there we go. Okay. So we've got both of these. And what I want to do right here is just grab the, the move tool. And now I'm just going to press shift and drag this second version on top of the first. And now once I've done that, done that, I can close this out. And so as you can see, these are of course, because it's the same image, they're perfectly aligned, but this will give me a chance to kind of work with this selectively. I want the overall look to be this, but I'm going to bring some, some other layers on top of it. So I'm going to rename layer one as neon so we know what we're working with. Then I'm going to create the next selection based on a very small area. I want to work on the three of these things separately. So 
I'm just going to select right in here. And I'm going to call this window. So I'm going to come up here, layer, new, via copy, and rename this as window. And then my final selection, I'm just going to work with right in here. And this one, I'm going to call sign. All right, I'm going to turn off these two for now. And what I want to do here is affect all of this neon right here. So on this this overall layer right here, I'm going to come up here to my selection, color range. And now I'm just going to use my eyedropper, holding down the shift. When you do too much, Command Z. So that we select all of this area right in here. Okay, let's see what we've got. Yeah, we can work with that. Okay, so I want to apply this mask because I don't want, I'll show you right here, I don't want to affect this area down at the bottom of the frame and some of these little dots throughout here. We're going to deal with, with this later anyway. So I just want to kind of clean this up so we're really only dealing with that neon right there. So I'm going to put on this mask grab my brush, make sure that it's set for um, hard, so it's a nice hard edge brush. And I'm just going to paint out the areas that I don't want to affect. Black hides, white reveal, so we're painting these things in black. I don't want it right up here. Um, actually, I think it's okay if it if it jumps around there. So let's see what we've got right now. Right there. And maybe I'll just get rid of a couple of these. Now we look good. Okay, so we've got that. And now I'm going to apply a layer mask on top of that. And as you see, it's basically we've just added the overall neon from the daylight balanced image on top of the tungsten. Okay, turning these off. Next thing I'm going to look at is this window right here. So let's blow this up and see what we're doing. Okay, so within this selection right here, I'm on the window, and I again want to select color range and start right in there and just drag it out. Make sure that I've got all the, all the light in the window selected. And let's see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty good. I want to get rid of this right here at the bottom though. there. That looks really good. Okay. So now on a window, I'm just going to mask that as well. Okay. So as you see, it's only really gotten this part of the window. Finally, let's select the layer for the sign. And we again want to do 
a color range. Shift and drag through to get the whole area. Hit OK. And let's look at that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to get rid of this one spot right here for our neck to jump ahead for our next step. It's not really going to affect anything here because it's just a dark spot, but I don't want it to stay that way. So I just want to paint that out. Otherwise that looks good. Yeah, they can work with that. Okay. I'm going to apply a mask once again. So you see what we've got. So the overall neon right there, second layer with just this window light and then the final one of the sign. And the good thing, because these are all in separate layers, I can come through and if I decide I want to adjust this neon, I can make it lighter or darker. However, I think that looks, that's kind of a nice blend right there. I'll leave it right there. And now I come up to the window and I can darken that if I want to. But what if I want it to be brighter? Well, I could do a curves layer, or actually what I prefer to do is let's just duplicate that. So layer, duplicate layer, and now I've got window copy. And we know if we change our blend mode to screen, it's basically going to multiply those. So if I want a really bright window, I can do that, or just dialing it down to whatever I want. But these are independent of each other, so I can get each just the way that I want it. Let's go with that right there. And then same thing up here. Here's our sign layer. And I like that full strength. So that looks really good right there. Let's take a look at that. And I think I'm definitely happy with that, but I know there are some of you who are looking at this going, gee, why don't the two sides of the sign match? And you know what? You're right. They don't. So it kind of depends. Like if you are, if you want to be literal with this, we have done reality, but you don't have to be, do reality. So let's instead, let's make a copy of this layer, duplicate layer again. And just so I know, I'm going to do this and call this sign right. So now I have a copy of that. Let's come up to edit, transform, and flip horizontal to in reverse the layer. Okay. Can again grab the move tool. And as you can see, it's not perfectly symmetrical, but we have a fix for that. I'm going to select transform and just try to kind of rotate this guy into position. And this bottom, you see it's dragging down a little bit too far. So what I'm going to do to have the most adjustment, transform, skew, and that lets me move basically every corner independently. That's lined up pretty good. How are we doing here on the top? This could come in just a touch. And 
pretty much all that looks good, except I know I'm going to want to clean this up. So let's look at that right there and do OK. And now just come right in here. Smaller brush. Not 100% perfect, but close enough for government work. So here you see we've just duplicated that. And now that we've got what we want, we're going to save it. So now that we've got our final image, we just wanted to compare it to our original. So here's what we would have had if we shot it daylight white balance without any modification. So you can see it's pretty dramatic. It just, look, this is a representational image of what it actually looked like, but it doesn't have the feel that you have in your mind. A lot of times what you're really going for is the image that matches the way that you see things. And as you see with your eyes, you've got great dynamic range because we've got that on the sensor. You want to be able to feel that. So perfectly fine, but that's a lot more interesting. And once we've created the look that we want for this first image, we can select the, the additional images from the take and synchronize the settings that apply. White balance, highlights and shadows, clarity, and our color adjustments across the whole group of images. As we take a look at the, the rest of the selects, It's a good starting point for the rest of what we want to do.